Hello, today I want to talk about a question that many people have been asking me about. What is the future of the smart home? Is that a technology that is about to happen? Is it still a long ways in the future? And what might it look like? So I would say the first thing that I would say is that in the near term, most of the innovations in the smart home will first start and will appear in the smart office. The kinds of things that will eventually be our everyday resident experience, I think are going to first occur and will experience at the office. So things like regulating the heat, regulating the media, regulating lights, those things are expensive and complicated. Um, while there has been some work happening in homes, some devices, it's still kind of a pain. But a company has a bigger incentive to manage these things and to optimize them and to make them efficient. Um, and they have the resources to put into developing and managing them. And so I think that a lot of these things are going to um, first be proven and established and developed in the realm of work where there are the resources devoted to making that happen. And then later they will drift back into our homes. So today when we talk about smart homes, there's only about four or five different things that it really means. It means things like adjusting your lights in a smart way. It means adjusting uh, the heat and cold, the, the air conditioning and the furnace. It means adjusting um, uh, the security in your home. Um, and those are the kinds of things um, that are just at the tentative stage, but will be developed even further again in an office environment or in a work environment. So we can kind of look forward to the time when um, not only will these processes be further automated in the terms of there's nobody in an office or a home who is adjusting the temperature manually, it's all done programmatically, we will begin to see the first attempts at trying to do this at the personal level so that one person who's sensitive to the cold or to the heat may work and operate at a different temperature than somebody else, maybe even sitting next to them. And so we have this idea that the environment can be manipulated and personalized in a way that we can't do in a manual way. And also it requires technologies that hardly exist right now that is able to make a microclimate like that, where you can actually target an environment at the individual level. And of course, if you have something that's personalized like that, it also stands to reason you could also personalize it depending on the time of day or the season um, or the mood of the person so that the end result is that a fundamental thing like climate, temperature, air conditioning, fresh air can all be customized and tailored to individual preferences, even in a very large operation like a company. And if you can do that, then you can certainly do it in a home. So that's the first thing. And we can do the same thing with lighting, where we can have um, the temperature of the light, the degree of lighting, the mood of the light alter depending on our preferences, but also maybe depending on the situation or the context. Um, a lot of people have done research showing that people sleep better when their own screens shift to away from the blue light into a yellow light. And so we can have things done automatically like that without having to really think about it. And that's something, again, that even a company or corporation could afford to invest into at large scale, developing the technology, which can then later on um, move into the home. Another area 
where there has been um, a lot of work in smart homes already is in the um, area of security. So um, often homes are unattended, we're away from them, or even while we're, while we're there, they're often large and we don't um, have complete awareness of the front or the back of the house. Um, there has been a movement to use cameras, sensors, other kinds of technologies to uh, make the house more aware of its environment and of the people in the house. So the security can go both ways. It can be secure from um, visitors, babysitters who want to be monitored, to um, intruders from outside, to delivery people. And um, uh, again, this is a technology that will be primarily developed um, in um, corporations or companies who are interested not just whether someone can come in through the front door, but whether people have access or permission to go to other places in a building. And so um, the idea of having kind of a slight awareness, having the home has a slight awareness about who's allowed to be there and what their um, permissions are is something that as homes become more complicated and sophisticated, that will be an integral part of that smartness. There's a secondary um, aspect to this, which is deliveries. So um, as we head into the future, and if my proposition that most people will begin to perhaps own less and have access to more, that access is coming from the outside. In other words, you having you're going to have more and more deliveries to your home, to wherever you are, to your office. There's there's much more of a traffic coming and going, and so managing that flow of goods and stuff into your home and out of your home becomes part of what the smart home wants to do. It wants to be able to monitor, manage, optimize, make it efficient, making sure that things that are coming get, get there, making sure that nothing that shouldn't be coming does not get there. And so um, that process of that, that respiration, almost like inhaling and exhaling, becomes part of what this smart home is doing and managing those flows of deliveries from Amazon, the food deliveries, um, whatever else that you're coming and going into your home. If you are subscribing to clothes instead of purchasing them, there is a flow of stuff coming in. There also should be a flow of things going out that are being recycled and reused. That also has to be managed. And so even if we want to kind of, some people imagine that we have a box or some kind of portal where things are left after they've been delivered, left off before they make it into a house, somewhere in between the house and the inside the house. There has to be some way that that can be done smartly again making sure that things are really delivered as they promised to be, um, managing whether they have to be refrigerated. So there, there, there certainly could be some kind of like a membrane to the smart home that is serving as this portal to this flow of materials in and out of, of the home. And that will be part of the smart home, this kind of refrigerated, uh, you know, augmented, smart portal that's going to accept deliveries and also more and more companies will be responsible for uh, dealing with the refuse, the discards, the packaging, um, the, the, the items that are broken. And so that, that process will be managed by this smart home. The other um, aspect of uh, where the very beginnings of the smart home have already started is in cleaning. Again, kind of maintaining the home, cleaning and repair. And uh, the most popular, the most successful um, home robot, which they call um, a demotic, instead of robotic, is a demotic, D-O-M-O, -O, demo, dem demotic, which is like a domesticated robot. So demotics is the science of these interior household robots. So the most successful demotic so far has been the Roomba, this vacuuming bot, and its other kind of imitators. 
Um, but that's just the, the first of many smart home things. And right now that Roomba is not so integrated into the home itself. It kind of runs as an independent entity, but it can be very much integrated into the rest of the home um, in terms of being able to um, be managed by the ecosystem of the home. Um, and if we could imagine other kinds of household bots, other kind of domotics that might do cleaning of the bathroom, that might do some kind of work in the kitchen, um, those are certainly kind of where we're headed. And um, uh, they would want to be aware of and integrated into the rest of this home, smart home system in terms of if they need, say they were going to prepare food, they would take a delivery from Amazon or somewhere uh, that was food delivers and like potatoes and they would prepare them. They would do some basic preparing that maybe to be cooked by the human in the house. And so they have to be integrated with the rest of the, the system of the smart home. Um, but that is uh, that kind of household chores doing laundry, like whether the laundry is done on the premises or again, maybe collected by a bot and then sent out to be cleaned and then returned back. That handoff would be something part of that smart home process. The, the, um, the main, the main, the main interface for the smart home, uh, is proving to be, uh, a Butler a personal assistant that we can speak to. So we've seen the very, very beginnings of Alexa, where people are speaking to Alexa, requesting to do things. So far, Alexa and Google Home and Siri are fairly Sorry, I'm not sure. dumb. <laughs> Alexa just woke up. And um, uh, the kinds of tasks that they can do are very limited. Uh, the interface to them is still very, very primitive. Um, there is still a long way to go, but we can kind of see the beginnings of a personal assistant in the home and including the office where ones where, where voice interface was the primary method of communicating with them. As I said, there's a lot to be learned how to do that. And that voice interface will probably have a screen component in some ways. Um, at least in the intermediate until they become really, really good and can understand exactly what we mean. But that interface uh, is going to be the primary way that we um, del del deal with the smart home. And I think for many people, that interface will come to represent the smart home and maybe even the smart office. So we go in and we have this thing that we speak to or that whispers into our ear, that we hear, or we whisper to it, and it's able to discern what we want and deliver and provide what it is that we want. And rather than kind of have to pick up your phone and lower the shades, you'll just say, you know, Siri, lower the shades, or Siri, turn down the lights. That is by far a better interface than, than even the phone app. And so um, I think most of the kind of smart home tasks will gravitate towards this voice interface as the primary mode. So um, the, the third kind of large scale um, arena for the smart home today has been in appliances. So the idea is that, you know, you would have a house full of smart appliances. And that has been talked about for a very, very long time. Um, and it's been very slow in coming because, frankly, smartness is very hard to do unless you have a lot of really cheap AI, which is just starting to come. So the, the intent was always very clear and the tent has really not changed is we want to have a smart refrigerator. We want to have a smart oven that is able to maybe even recognize what's being put into the oven and then 
or we could certainly tell it it's a peach pie, and then it would cook the pie to perfection, just watching the pie constantly and adjusting the heat and other things until it was perfect. In the same mode, you'd want a smart refrigerator, a smart fridge that would know what was inside of it and know the expiration dates of everything. It is watching you as you put it in. It's reading the barcodes or the dates. It's knowing when things perish, when things need to be replaced, what's in there. You can manage your shopping list um, and also can suggest something that you could cook based on what's inside the refrigerator. So that kind of thing has been talked about for a long time. The, the, the difficulty has been the smartness to do all that has not been available. They've had to try to fake it in some ways and it just doesn't work. Um, it's still waiting for kind of really cheap, ubiquitous, much smarter AI to be present. And then those kinds of smart appliances could certainly be possible. And you would have smart toasters. Again, there would be cameras built inside of these things in all different levels so they could actually see what it is rather than guess. I mean, your toaster is pretty dumb. It's just guessing whether it's been browned or not. It doesn't actually know, but it could know. And that's kind of where we're headed. And this would operate again on the ubiquitous AI that's getting from the cloud, or maybe it's built in. So, so as AI progresses, we'll see more of these things. And that is the sort of scarce resource that it's waiting for to happen is cheap AI. So um, one area where we haven't seen very much of the smart appliances that were going to would be pretty um, uh, effective and productive is in the bedroom. So smart beds, beds that would actually track your sleep beds that maybe would adjust themselves to how you were sleeping in real time, beds that could um, change um, their conf configuration or confirmation to make you sleep better. So um, again, the idea of putting AI into a bed had always seemed kind of dumb because it was so expensive to do. Um, because it required a lot of sensors and things, but those are becoming so cheap that eventually every bed will be smart in the sense of something that could uh, monitor your sleep and um, change itself to provide a better sleep for you as you're sleeping. And then the final frontier in the kind of smart rooms is the bathroom. And again, this is a vision that's not new. It's been Imagine forever, which is the bathroom, if it was truly engaged and amplified and augmented with AI, could become your wellness center. It would be the place that not only would you weigh yourself, but you could have full body scans. You could, um, along with your toilet and processing your waste, you could actually do microbial analysis of your biome on a daily basis. There could be a sense in which your body's been monitored day to day um, in a way that you couldn't even do at the doctor's office. And that daily scrutiny of your own body um, would give you an ability to um, have medical care that we don't, that we can't, even the richest person is not getting today. So the bathroom could certainly become much more of a health center when it was amplified by the smartness of AI. And again, it could be even things like when you're spitting from your toothpaste, or even you could have uh, uh, toothbrushes that could read your exhalations, because when you exhale from your body, you're actually exhaling your own chemistry. It's kind of like a way of doing your blood without having to puncture yourself. So just breathing out into a device, even a toothbrush could give you so much more information than we even get at the, at the doctor's office today. And you're getting that twice a day, once a day, whatever it is. And that becomes looking to your eyes, looking at the your irises, there's all kinds of things, looking at your blood pressure, all these things could be done in an almost a non-invasive way 
while you're in the bathroom. And so this room becomes kind of your wellness center, your kind of your doctor's office in this smart home. So um, the last kind of room that I want to mention that um, where the smartness can play a role is in um, your clothes, your closet. And so as clothes become embedded with sensors that can monitor a posture, that can maybe even change how they look, um, they'll be hanging somewhere, whether we're borrowing them or subscribing to them or whether we're owning them, they have to they have to have a home somewhere and during that period of time, they're syncing with the rest of the house, they're integrating uh, and exchanging information. And um, the, the point is, is that anything that we make smart really has to be part of a, a ecosystem, a network of other things to remain smart. It isn't operating in isolation. It is part of the household system, part of the home. And um, in order to manage all these things like smart clothes and your smart refrigerator, smart bed, it's going to require a very sophisticated platform, a platform, a home platform where all these things can speak to each other, where they can be managed, you know, the, the, the charging of it, the, um, uh, you know, all the discrepancies and, the, and, the, and, you know, whatever kind of upkeep and upgrading they require it has to be kind of managed in some way. So there has to be a manager, a, 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 a hub of some sort that's going to, run the house. And that's a necessary thing. Uh, and that's going to be a necessary evolution. So just as we today have a server, server and a router, we will also have a smart home hub or heart smart home server of some sort that's running the house. And that's necessary, but it's also bad news in some ways, because that means that that is a, a place where things can go wrong. It's a place where things can be hacked. Whenever you hear the word smart, smart home, smart city, smart clothes, that also means that they're hackable. So it's a hackable home. It's a hackable city. It's a hackable car. So the fact that we have this system of smartness also means that there's a new liability, which is the, uh, the, 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 the prospect that things could be hacked. Things can, um, can be taken down, it can be disrupted. And so um, there'll be plenty of technologies that will try to counteract that, but that's going to be a possibility that a new kind of possibility that's equivalent to being broken into in the old days. Your lock could be broken into, you, you could forget to lock it, or people could go around the lock. And in the smart home, we'll have a new kind of a, a little weakness, which is that it's going to be hackable in some ways. And so that's um, another whole um, level of technology and concern that we have to have as we build these smart homes. And so um, uh, the last thing I would say is that um, in addition to imagining this world as, of smartness as being embedded in a lot of electronics, there's also going to be a way in which the augmented reality smart glasses that we wear will do a lot of this connection as well. There'll be another layer of smartness brought in by the fact that we'll have smart glasses and that we can wear the smart glasses and see this version of the home, see this version of the office, see this version of, um, of smartness over the house. And that um, it isn't that everything's gonna have um, a battery or a plug in order to be connected a lot of these things will be connected visually through the glasses that we wear and see that will be mapping things and knowing where they are. And so I want to emphasize that a lot of this technology will be accomplished, again, not by running wires everywhere, but by the use of smart glasses, which will make a digital overlay and will connect everything together. So that's what I think the vision of the smart home looks like in the near future. Um, I think it's going to be 20 or 30 years. I don't think this is happening 
next year, but bit by bit, pieces will happen. Uh, they'll incrementally add a little bit of smartness and it'll be very accelerated um, the faster the AI becomes cheap and ubiquitous. So thank you for listening.